Z with incredibly flattering dress to meet President. First Lady of the United States Melania Trump has proved on many occasions that she's very elegant and classy. She looks stunning in every outfit she chooses to wear. On Tuesday, she attended a meeting with her husband President Donald Trump at his golf property in Bedminster, New Jersey. As she was a sleeveless wide dress, she turned a few heads. Daily Caller reports. The First Lady couldn't help but catch everyone's eye in the gorgeous number as she sat next to the President and Secretary of Health and Human Services Tom Price. The dress looked incredibly flattering on her at the gathering where Trump and Price discussed the dangers of opiate addiction facing the country. Before the meeting, she posted a photo on Instagram in order to give her support at the meeting today. The photo was captioned Opioids are destroying our youth, people. MTGW POTUS and its SEC price from today to give my support to hash stop drug addiction. The First Lady is always dressed classy no matter where she's going. I guess it paid off to be a former model. We've never seen her in an ugly outfit. Rand Paul discovers easy way to rid America of Obamacare forever. President Trump has a huge campaign promise to fill that is to repeal Obamacare and unburden millions of suffering taxpayers. The burden is vast and spreads across all states and not only is Trump sick of it, but so is Rand Paul. However, there is finally some good news. Advertisement Senator Rand Paul just disclosed that President Trump is sick of the slow-moving Congress. Trump is going to take matters into his own hands. If he takes executive action. It will permit insurers to offer cheaper insurance plans instead of saddling everyone with high premiums. Kentucky Senator, Rand Paul, has announced to reporters that the president is considering taking executive actions to handle the Obamacare issue after Senator John McCain foiled the attempt to pass a bill that would potentially repeal Obamacare. This would let big corporations like AARP. AARP represents retirees. It is also allowing business to integrate and negotiate with health insurance providers for lower premiums. Can you imagine the leverage you would get for drug prices and insurance prices if you were negotiating for 5 million people? Said Paul. If you could legalize that, not only could it fix some of the problems that we are encountering in the individual market, there's 28 million people without insurance because it's too expensive. What if we force the price down enough? Also. The president can approve state waivers to Medicaid and that would allow states to reduce the costs of Medicaid premiums and would permit states to implement an employment requirement and drug testing. The president has also been putting pressure on Congress to go through on their commitments after a long seven years. He said, if a new health care bill is not approved quickly, bailouts for insurance companies and bailouts from members of Congress will end very soon. What do you think of this news? Trump's lawyer Jay Sekulow finally gets to bottom of Lynch-Clinton tarmac meeting. New details emerge about the tarmac meeting between former Attorney General Loretta Lynch and former President Bill Clinton. The meeting took place in Phoenix in June 2016, right before Department of Justice was about to decide if former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton revealed classified information when she used her private email account. Insider Fox News reports. Due to a Freedom of Information Act request from the American Center for Law and Justice (ACLJ), the Dodge released 413 pages of documents related to the June 27, 2016 meeting. According to the documents, reporters didn't want to cover the meeting and Lynch didn't use her real name for official Dodge emails, even those regarding the meeting. According to Trump's lawyer Jay Sekulow, the documents reveal the emails between the FBI and the Dodge and the Dodge and the White House, related to the meeting. Insider Fox News reports, We do know that this reached the FBI, the Department of Justice. At the Department of Justice, went as high as the Attorney General. At the FBI, at least to the Chief of Staff to, then FBI Director, James Comey, Sekulow said. And we now have an email that goes from the Department of Justice to the White House, to the Press Secretary there. One of the people in the emails was revealed. Her name is Paige Herwig, who was a counselor to Lynch at the time. 
Herwig now is the attorney for the Democrats in the Senate Judiciary Committee, which is investigating Lynch. Insider Fox News reports, Seculo also noted that the documents are heavily redacted, including an email of talking points to be used in response to media inquiries about the meeting. Seculo is hoping to get the unredacted documents when he goes back to court because the documents were never supposed to be redacted. He's getting to the bottom of this controversial meeting. Breaking judge orders Democratic senator to face criminal charges in court. A pathetic last tries by Democratic Senator Bob Menendez to avoid a federal corruption trial. The trial was scheduled to start in September, a judge rejected the attempt by Menendez. Menendez, accused of giving political favors to Florida I Dr. Salomon Melgen in exchange for campaign contributions and gifts, asked that the case against him be dismissed on account of the Supreme Court's 2016 decision to overturn the corruption conviction of former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell. Advertisement, the corrupt fool's attorneys combated with the prosecutor that none of the alleged assistants he offered Melgen were official acts. They believe that should counter any kind of legal argument against him. Well, that's not always how it works. You can spin words and semantics, but at the end of the day, when you've done wrong, you're going to pay for it. U.S. District Court Judge William Walsh gave his statement. Whether the acts alleged in the superseding indictment satisfy the definition of an official act under McDonnell is a factual determination that cannot be resolved before the government has the opportunity to present evidence at trial, wrote Walls in his rejection of the dismissal request. Menendez was given campaign funds from Melgen and was given flights on private jets and lavish vacations. Prosecutors press that Menendez actually used his power to aid Melgen in Billings disputes with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Melgen was convicted in a Medicare fraud case in April. Menendez will be busy with court proceedings for four days a week beginning in September. Jury selection for the trial will begin later this month. Menendez and committees tied to him received over $750,000 in contributions from Melgen. A standard Democratic hypocrite is trying to pull the wool over a judge's eyes and it's clearly not working. Advertisement, share this. After weeks long absence, Melania breaks silence with heartbreaking announcement. Without a reason, right from the moment that she became our first lady, liberals did anything possible to destroy her image. I am talking about Melania Trump in case you don't know. The current First Lady is facing such a pressure after taking the role as a flotist that basically, liberals together with the mainstream media did not let her even to breathe. Due to these attacks, the First Lady who declares herself as an introvert who does not want so many attentions around her took her time off. After her little break from everything that happened, we are very happy to hear from proud patriots that our First Lady is back stronger and better than before with one even more amazing announcement. Liberals gossiped all kinds of stuff. For example, they told how she and Ivka are not in a good place and are fighting, how she plans to divorce the president, how she is incapable to do her job as first lady but luckily none of this is true. Melania thought that she together with Baron needed some time out of the spotlight. She is back and she was, in fact, working on something while she was gone. She took to Twitter on Tuesday and published this photo Melania announced that she is planning to end the destructive power of opioids. Unlike the previous administration that in fact ignored this problem as much as they could, she is here to fight against it. What a clever comeback! Some rumors are floating around that the First Lady even wants to end all the drug kingdoms in America. She is against, the thing that is destroying our youth. Breaking Eric Bowling Strikes Back, Sues Pants Off Liberal Reporter After the story about Eric Bowling broke last week, he was in a daze. Well, that daze didn't last long as he is now suing Yash Raleigh of the Huff Post for defamation. He is seeking $50 million plus in damages. Yes, he knows he won't get that much, but he certainly will tie these fools up in litigation so they rethink the nonsense litigation they have pressed against bullying. 
On Saturday Fox News suspended bullying because of the claims of harassing messages sent to appalling women years ago via text message. Michael Bow is representing bullying in the litigation against Holly. A spokesperson for Fox announced on Saturday that bullying will be investigated by the Paul Weiss law firm. That's the same firm that investigated former chairman and CEO Roger Riles, who was ousted from the network just two days after the firm began investigating. Isles passed away in May. Apparently some of these dozen women received unsolicited photos of male genitalia from bullying, but this was years ago. Most times I would say innocent until proven guilty, but since more than one person has accused him and it was years ago. Wait, it's still innocent until proven guilty. This is America and the liberals need to get over that. If he is guilty, they will have legitimate proof, if not, they will be shown for the fraudulent sleaze balls that they are. These women should be sued if they're lying and they should be arrested. Filing false litigation should be some kind of punishable. Advertisement What do you think of this story? Should bullying keep up the suit against?